What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to GazetteSports.com. It's JJ. And Mike. And this live London Olympics coverage is brought to you by the LeBounty Group, the Aquatic Capital of America Foundation, and of course, everything we do at Gazette Sports brought to you by Naples Rib Company. We're back here at Historic Hyde Park again. Yesterday, we were telling you about the different souvenirs and trinkets one can buy to remember their time here at London 2012. And today, we're going to go a little bit deeper into that pin trading culture. They're literally lining up here at the Coca-Cola Pin Trading Center. People of all ages, creeds, and nationalities who've come to enjoy this experience together. It's actually a social thing as much as it is a merchandising venture. You can get pins not only from every experience here in London, but from previous Olympics as well. And a lot of those vintage pins from Tokyo and Los Angeles are just as popular as anything you'll find here in London. As you can see, I've been bitten by the bug. You can see a couple of the different pins that I've gotten just recently over at the Coca-Cola station, but we've been buying these pins pretty much around the parks at all the different venues we've been going to just to try and bring a little bit of uh, London back home with us. But the guys who are real pros, JJ and I are just amateurs at this, are the people you see behind me over there to the right. We got a chance to talk to Brian from Calgary, who's an experienced pin trader, about some of his experiences here at the Olympics. Probably the best thing that I could say about it is the fact that your t-shirts, your sh your, your hats and whatnot wear out after time. The pins don't. You can put it in a little box, doesn't take up a lot of a lot of time and effort to, to put them there and they, they last forever. And you get you can pull them out 20 years from now and say, oh I remember trading in Hyde Park. I remember trading at Olympic Park. We start out with multiples of a couple different kinds and we trade uh, laterally to try to pick up all the different ones we can. Because hopefully, you know, you hit everybody with something different and uh, with our traders and that covers the ground pretty good. Like we basically came with two London pins and traded and now we have like a thousand different kinds. But that's over a period of uh, two weeks. Yeah. Well, that gives you a sense too of how many people are interested in this. It's a, this is our first Olympics and I wasn't really aware of this culture, this aspect of the Olympic Games. How many people would you estimate? I, I mean, your guys' spot has seemed pretty busy. Has the foot, foot traffic been very heavy? Have you traded with a lot of different people? Well, again, I'm a little disappointed with the Brits. They're, they're really slow. They don't quite understand it. Uh, I think that every nation that hosts the Olympics for the first time, and obviously they haven't heard, they've hosted it three times, but uh, most nations get all excited about it and they, they can't get enough of it during the Olympics and it lasts after the Olympics. But as you get further away from the Olympics, the, the excitement dies down, of course, right? But it, it resurges again at every other Olympics and it always seems to be the same. It's just like, it's a spirit. Yeah. It's a very strong spirit with the pin trading. It's just a lot of fun. And if people would just loosen up and get involved, they, they don't know what they're missing out on. That was a look inside the London Olympic experience brought to you by GazetteSports.com. Thanks, of course, to McCarty's, Dreaming in Gold since 1932, and the rest of the sponsors at the top of the video. These games are almost done, but stay with us. we still got more to come. Here at GazetteSports.com, we are Long Beach Sports.